So, Toyotaro is considered a bad dude for this, but have you seen this? Holy shit, do I have a lot to say on this one! For those of you out there that saw the title of this video and thought that maybe I titled it unfairly and without thinking, I mean, I had other titles in mind, but this seemed to be the nicest. I'm always gonna try to be honest with you guys, and if this video has any moral to take away from it, it's that lying is bad. And trust me, I'll get to that. But yes, this video is about Dragon Ball's successor manga, Dragon Ball Super. Or as some people like to call it, Cho, but they don't even call it that in Japan. What's wrong with you? Now, I have been fair to the super manga in the past. The heck, some of my most popular videos have been about the manga and what I thought it's been doing right. However, this won't be one of those videos. No! I wanted to give Toyotaro a chance, I, I really did. But to tell you the truth, it's been pretty bad for a while now. But the last few chapters have been particularly atrocious. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first, Toyotaro is no Akira Toriyama. And that right there was the very reason why I didn't want to harshly judge the manga's quality early on. That is, until enough time had passed for Toyotaro to fully settle into the role. I mean, you wouldn't judge a brand new professional fighter for having a shaky start, even if his trainer was Floyd Mayweather. Everyone's human and everyone needs a chance to find their groove. So I figured I would give Toyotaro that same courtesy. I mean, if we really look at it, he's following one of the most celebrated mangakas ever while carrying on the manga representing one of the most popular franchises in history. Not just one of the most popular animes ever, one of the most popular franchises, period. Looking at Dragon Ball's video game sales and Super's recent merch sales will tell you everything you need to know about that. So, to cut a long story short, because I'm sure you all know the situation already, Toei wanted to make a new Dragon Ball anime and manga. Akira Toriyama was kind of on board with the idea, but was more likely to take up shark juggling than to start illustrating a manga again. So Toei was like, don't worry, I got you fam. We can pick a few people to audition and you can choose your successor. Toriyama must have liked the idea because soon after the world of Dragon Ball was introduced to a bouncing baby Toyotaro. Only he's not a baby or bouncing, but he is Toyotaro. Some of you might even have heard of him from his unofficial Dragon Ball fanfic, Dragon Ball AF, where he went by the name of Toybull. Everything seemed to be going great for Toyotaro. He was carrying on the legacy of Toriyama's manga, he was an enormous fan of the series growing up, and Toriyama himself chose him believing that he had something special. Yes siree, things were going smoothly, until... In May of 2018, Toyotaro posted this sketch on his Twitter. A number of days later, this image surfaced online, with evidence of Toyotaro tracing sections of the Captain America character. Because of this, a large number of fans decided to go back through the super manga to see if there were any other traced parts. This is what they found. A large number of heavily referenced images from the old Dragon Ball manga sources. This, for a large number of fans, was used as further reason to bolster their argument that Toyotaro was a bad mangaka. But, let me ask you a question. Do you or anyone you know own a copy of Iron Marshall? No? How about this? Have you even heard of this comic? I personally hadn't until I began writing this video, but it's something I think puts this argument into perspective. For instance, if I was to put these two images side by side, what would you say? Now, I know what you're thinking. That looks like All Might. But other than that, they look sort of similar, right? Now, if I was to tell you that that Iron Marshall chapter was published in 1989, and that image of Dragon Ball was published in 1991, what would you say then? To me, that looks heavily referenced, but it's definitely not traced. Toriyama clearly drew that himself, but the framing and poses are all copied. Piccolo's foot, legs, hand positioning, pretty much everything in this image was copied from the Iron Marshall comic. And Toyotaro referencing earlier material for posing isn't something that's new to the franchise. Dragon Ball has been cannibalizing itself for decades now, so I think pegging Toyotaro's originality as the main reason why people should label him as a bad mangaka, I think at least, is wrong. So, if referencing isn't an issue and Toriyama did it too, then Toyotaro, aside from the Captain America trace, should be considered a great mangaka, right? No! 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 Not by a long shot. The real bread and butter to the manga game has and always will be composition and pacing. Style can only get you so far. For those of you out there that don't know what that is, it's the author's ability to frame and position the characters and panels on a given page to encourage further reading. 
Put more simply, it's the imagination one possesses to create an interesting looking page that's easy to read. And if you require an even simpler explanation, men make cool pictures want read more. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with Dragon Ball being one of the highest selling mangas of all time, you better believe Akira Toriyama understood these principles and implemented them in extremely effective ways. So let's just say there was a standard that needed to be met with the super manga, and I think this interview with both Toriyama and Toyotaro present was telling to say the least. Toriyama, when speaking on what Toyotaro could stand to improve upon, said, Let's see, if I had to say something else, then I guess it's that you're too careful particularly with battle scenes. It might actually be good to cut corners a bit. Toyotara responds, Battle scenes are really difficult and I'm always fretting over them. To which Toriyama finishes with, I had trouble drawing fights too, but sometimes drawing them with a rough touch can produce good results oddly enough. That's why it's important to cut corners. That'll be perfect. And then Toyotara responds, I'll keep that in mind. Oh, and uh, spoiler alert, he doesn't keep that in mind. It's a shame he didn't heed this warning because in this instance, Toriyama summed up Toyotaro's problems perfectly. He's asking you to do less work. Why can't you do that? <laughs> Sorry about that. To better illustrate my point though, here are two pages. The page on the left is from Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball manga, and the one on the right is from a recent chapter of Toyotaro's Dragon Ball Super manga. What's the difference between these two pages, I ask you? Or better yet, which one would you be more inclined to read? You might not know why, but you're probably inclined to choose Toriyama's one, right? And in short, here's why. There's too much shit going on in Toyotara's one. Too many pointless panels and too much being said that ultimately amounts to nothing. There's a time and place for everything and that isn't it. If you look at Toriyama's first page, you can see that it's simple, offers little to read and occupies the page with larger detailed images to convey what's going on. And above all else, finishes on a hook and or cliffhanger. You'll find that in a Toriyama manga that practically every page ends in a cliffhanger of sorts. Something that teases you to turn the page to see what happens next. Something I also want to draw attention to are Toriyama's use of reaction shots. Let's count the amount of reaction shots in this scuffle with Nappa and Goku. In 12 pages, there are five panels featuring commentary from other characters. Five. Now, if I was to look at the Vegeta fight with Jiren in chapter 40 of Dragon Ball Super, how many reaction shots do you think I'll find? Well, I'm glad you asked. In eight pages, there were nine reaction shots with and without commentary. Four fewer pages and almost twice the reaction shots. But why is that an issue I hear you asking? Because they make pages look way too fucking crowded. Within these eight pages Toyotaro drew, I liked one panel, this one. Why? Because it was the only one given room to breathe. And what do I mean by given room to breathe? By that I am referring to the space and composition of a given image or page. In a Toriyama manga, his panels can be seen and understood at a glance. The same is not true for Toyotaro's manga. You kinda have to look at it and figure out what's going on in a sense. A lot of this is due to Toyotaro bloating his chapters with unnecessary panels. Again, this goes back to that bit of advice Toriyama gave to Toyotaro about cutting corners. Less is more. The readers only need so much detail, the rest is filler. For instance, let's take a look at that Toriyama Nappa vs Goku sequence again. How many panels were there used in 8 pages of it? The answer? 30. In Toyotaro's 8 pages, he uses 54 panels. In the same amount of pages, Toyotaro uses almost twice the amount of panels Toriyama elected to use. And it shows! Everything looks so crammed together. There are no big page spreads, nothing is given room to breathe. Except this. I like this. And to prove that it's not impossible, I, someone who has no experience writing or drawing a manga, will attempt to fix three pages from Toyotaro's one. These three pages were taken from the beginning of chapter 38. By the way, if I was to really do this, I'd start from scratch drawing these poses, making sure the panels fit the way I want them to. But we can't always have it our way, can we Toyotaro? So let's begin. The first page had way too much going on to establish a scene. And again, these reaction shots are not needed. So this is what I did with the space. I reorganized a few things and kept it simple. I only used what was needed to get the point across to the reader. As a result, more people get to appreciate this nice drawing of Kale and they are not bored. Instead of scanning through six panels, there are just two. I pretty much do the same thing for the remaining two pages. I remove what I think is unnecessary and I think this works better. At least you won't get exhausted reading it. 
I really want to end on a positive note, but I can't pretend that this is okay. Ever since the future Trunks arc was completed, the Dragon Ball Super manga has gone into a complete and unmitigated nosedive in terms of quality. There are literal chapters going by now where I can say I didn't like a single drawing. Either because it wasn't given enough room to breathe, or because it lacked a basic understanding of anatomy. Or perspective. Or he ended up using the same pose 30,000 times. Now don't get me wrong, the guy can draw Dragon Ball in specific ways, but the very fact he lacks a base in gestural drawing and anatomic illustration is made evident with quite a few of his pieces. Again, he can draw Dragon Ball well, but the likelihood of him showing us something interesting on a regular basis is highly doubtful because of his limited experience. As for the story, all I have to say is this. In one chapter, Kale knocks out most of the universes without so much as an acknowledgement to their characters. It's truly... something. Oh, also this. Yeah, that happens too. <sighs> Look guys, the Dragon Ball Super manga is behind the anime, so there's no new information to gather from it in terms of plot. It's rushing all of its major plot points, making nothing feel important, and finally, its composition and artwork is either unimaginative or cluttered up to my goddamn eyeballs! I'm sorry. I genuinely loved the original Dragon Ball manga. I read the entire thing in a single week and have done multiple times. But this, this was just incredibly disappointing. I mean, in theory, Toyo Tower on the Dragon Ball Super manga should have worked, but that's just theory talk. I mean, theoretically speaking, if Muhammad is the most common first name in the world and Wang is the most common last name, then theoretically speaking, Muhammad Wang is the most common name on planet Earth. But I can't assure you of that. I'm joking. I can't assure you of anything. I can barely assure my car. Uh, Mark, you're supposed to insure your car, not assuring it isn't a thing. Huh? Uh oh. Anyway, point being, if it works in theory, it isn't always going to work in the real world. And Toyotaro being Dragon Ball Super's manga artist was a nice theory, but in practice, it's truly lackluster, and at worst, embarrassingly bad. Make sure to leave me your reaction to the Dragon Ball Super manga down below in the comment section. Do you think I was being fair or do you think I was being too harsh on Toyotaro? I can't wait to read what you think. As always, I've been Totally Not Mark. Thank you so much for watching.